I like him. The word for quick-tempered in the Bible is actually long of nose. So I am a quick-tempered man. Uh, there are a few of other, you others around here that are quick-tempered as well. Long of nose. Uh, it, literally, the verse goes, long of nose, great understanding, short of spirit, one who exalts folly. So all of us who have long noses are very, very wise people. Uh, the Hebrew word for anger is, is, it talks about a nose that grows hot. It's, if, you, if you're quick-tempered, you're short of nose. If you have a little button nose, you're a quick-tempered person because you don't have that long, nice nose. Um, the Bible saw me coming years in advance. Just another proof that it's inspired. Uh, but the person who's short of nose is quick-tempered, and that is always associated with folly. We display wisdom by holding our tempers, by being short-nosed. You know, it doesn't bump into things, I guess. So we get angry about it. Uh, I don't know where they came up with it. They, they had stuff that they were saying about oxen, and I didn't understand. But uh, do oxen have short noses? Are they hot, cold? I don't understand. Verse 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. The contrast here is between peace and envy, which prompts us, promotes life and and that which takes it. If we have envy, it will destroy us. If we, have, if we are generous, uh, it will give us life. The ancients knew that jealousy, passion, envy ate you from the inside. If you are, are, have those kinds of qualities in your life, it will destroy you. Verse 31 says, He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Mistreatment of the poor is the same thing as mistreatment of God. If we dishonor the poor, we are dishonoring God. Now again, it talks about hard work and industry, but God created these folks. God has placed them in their position, and we need to take care of them uh, because we also want to, to honor God. When calamity comes down, the wicked are brought down, but even in death, the righteous have a refuge. Wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning, and even among the fools, she lets herself be known. There's, you, you know, fools go to Fugle instead of Google to learn stuff. And at Fugle, you can learn about God, and God will make himself known, even in the presence of fools. But they don't listen. They don't hear. They don't understand. They don't follow. The image of wisdom reposing in the heart of a person may go all the way back to verse 1, where it talks about wisdom building a house. Wisdom moves in. Wisdom is, both, uh, is with both the discerning and with the fools, but she stays with, she resides with those who are wise. And we want to be wise and successful in this world. We may find a solution uh, to the puzzle of this strange pair of Proverbs by reading them together, where they would probably say that the righteous have a safe place in death and that wisdom has a place to lodge in the heart of the discerning. And it goes on to say, Give wisdom a place to dwell, and you will have a place to hide uh, in this life. Wisdom may also be known as the wicked are brought down even to the wicked. Even the wicked will find out what wisdom is all about. Even those who don't believe in God will find out what God is all about when uh, the end of the world comes. Verse 34 says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Verses 34 and 35 are linked by the theme of shame. I put that in for the little kids. The cone of shame. Spencer, do you, do you have to wear a cone of shame once in a while? No. The dog. You look like that dog. I'm serious. He's got his shoulders hunched up like this, like he's got that cone on right now. This verse actually springs a trap because it uses a, a word that is very common in the Bible in the Old Testament, especially Old Testament, all the time, uh, to, to spring a trap on it. And that word is hesed. And hesed almost always in the Bible means love. But here it means exactly the opposite. It means disgrace or shame, which is a very strange turn of events. And so it kind of springs this on us. You think you're getting love and you end up being disgraced because you haven't been listening to God. Verse 35 says, a king delights in a wise servant, but a shameful servant 
incurs his wrath. This proverb implies that a good kingdom requires good citizens. Good citizens are necessary if there's going to be good government. We need to be good citizens in order for us to have good government. We may wish for a, a, a good character qualities in our leaders, but what we nearly, really need to focus on is good character qualities in us. We have to have the same standards for us as we have for them. Honest and forthright character is always a good idea for someone else. But this verse says it is a good idea for us, that we need to focus on our lives. So let's talk a little bit as we conclude here about self-sacrifice and self-care. Because these verses talk a little bit about both of those ideas. It says the prudent are crowned with knowledge, in verse 18, as a form of honor from the community. We honor people in our community, and that is a good thing. It, this is about self-care. We want to be honored. We want to be recognized as being wise people, and so we want to be wise. This emphasis on standing in the community extends to how we treat the poor. You know, this is the Kennedy Center honors, and we honor the rich and the famous. Uh, Oprah's up there. Paul McCartney's up there. Those people are honored. But are they honored because of the way they, they treated the poor? This is what these verses are saying. Yes, we need to care for ourselves, but we also need to care for others. Security and abundant life in the end come not from any quest for gain, but in fear of the Lord. We need to take care of ourselves, but this doesn't come from looking about how much money we can get. Prudence looks out for the benefits to the self. Faithfulness looks out for the benefits that we can give to other people. And we need to have both. We want to build up ourselves. We want to be prudent, but we also want to be faithful in what we give to other folks. Wisdom balances this self-care with loving self-sacrifice. Yes, we need to take care of ourselves. And yes, it's all right to work so that you can have some security in this world. But we also need to give to others because we need to be faithful. To abuse the poor is to despise God, who should be feared. Conversely, righteousness brings with it a refuge that will protect you even from death. Even when you're dying, righteousness will protect you like it protected Eldon. Let's go. <laughs> Let's also talk a little bit about personal and political. And now you can toss this all out. This is lies, okay? The personal and political proverbs in this, in this section intertwine. What is good for the individual is good for the people. And if we're talking about uh, ordinary people helping out the poor, we need to talk about our government helping out the poor as well. The house that wisdom builds and indwells is both the heart of an individual and it is also the heart of the nation. Wisdom wants to live in both of us. To talk about politics is to talk about the moral health of the nation, measured in biblical terms, about how we treat the poor. This is what this chapter is, is, is harping on. Now, we can harp on other uh, subjects that, that uh, sh should be moral qualities, but this is the one that's, that it, uh, is, uh, this chapter is really boosting, so we're going to listen to it today. Kindness to the needy requires justice first, and charity second. We must be, have, supply the poor with justice, and we also must supply the poor with, uh, with love as well. We can offer kindness by simply being a friend to the needy, who are so often without it. You know, the needy need our help. The rich don't, but the needy do. We can offer kindness by refusing to despise a neighbor in need. We, as a people must be concerned about the poor in our country and the poor around the world. You know, this is why we're doing shoe boxes. This is why we're doing a uh, Christmas store. This is why we're helping out with Thanksgiving baskets. As, an, as a church, as individuals, as a people, we have to help the poor so that we don't become despised by God. Let's pray. Father, you haven't given us much, but you have given us more than a lot of folks in this world. Lord, we pray that you would help us to help those who are poorer than us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to help them with correction and with, and with um, some guidance as to how to spend their money and, and how to work harder and how to be wise. But also, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be able to give to them generously. 
because they have nothing and because you have everything. Lord, we pray that you would help us. 